Hey guys, what's up? I'm Jack and I am yet another Let's Player here on YouTube because you can never have too many of them. And to begin my Sonic the Hedgehog retrospective, we are here with the very first Sonic game I ever played. This is Sonic Heroes, released in Japan 2003, 2004, everywhere else, for the PlayStation 2, Xbox, PC and the version I'm playing, the GameCube. This was the very first Sonic game to be released on multiple consoles and well there's a reason I'm playing the GameCube version. <laughs> I am I do also have the PS2 version, but more on that. Probably around the end of the playthrough actually. And the purpose of the uh, focus of Sonic Heroes? Team-based gameplay. We have four teams to play through for our single player campaign, and yes guys, I'm doing them all. And not only that. We're doing it with all the A ranks, all 141, all the main missions, all the extra missions. The uh, thing you get with all of these question marks right here. This is going to be a long playthrough. We're looking at probably 65 parts at least here. And we have four teams, each representing a different difficulty. We have Team Sonic with Sonic, Tails and, and Knuckles. We have Team Dark with Shadow, Rouge and Newcomer E123 Omega. We have Team Rose with Amy Rose, Cream the Rabbit and Big for some reason. And returning from Knuckles Chaos 6, we have Team Chaos 6 with Espio, Charmy B and Vector. Each team has a different difficulty. We have Team Sonic as the normal mode, Team Dark as the hard mode, Team Rose as the easy mode, Team Chaos 6... Well, they're a bit up and down really because they have mission based gameplay. So, we're going to be getting with Team Sonic, and I know nobody has ever said this before, but take it away, Emma Chow! Team Sonic features high speed gameplay and intense team action! Let's blast through with Sonic Speed! Okay! Alright! Where are Sonic's legs? This one. Ha! Think I'd miss this? Time to crack that Eggman wide open! Yeah, let's party! So apparently Sonic has eyes in the back of his head so he can run backwards so he can watch Eggman's incredible uh, holographic uh, lesser, whatever that thing was. And again, why don't we just take the plane? It's a plane. 
we can easily just get to Eggman whose, egg, whose air fleet is in the air. It would make so much sense, but no, nope, we're going by Adventure 2 logic. The plane is too easy. We're just going to let it crash somewhere in the background. I didn't see Tails activate any sort of autopilot on that thing, so therefore, I'm convinced that he didn't. But anyway, welcome to Sonic Heroes and our first stage. Well, we got some familiar looking aesthetics, making its uh, 3D debut is something that's really overused nowadays. The Green Hill theme, known as Seaside Hill. I like to think of this stage as being a bit of a mixture between Seaside Hill and Emerald Coast from Sonic Adventure. Oh, Green Hill and Emerald Coast from Sonic Adventure, which would be pretty cool, like a combination of the first 2D level and the first 3D level. That'd be pretty cool. I don't know if that was intentional. But, you know, that's just how I like to think of it. So, with Sonic Heroes, you are in control of three characters at the same time. We have three formations, identified by the symbols you can see in the top right corner of the screen there. Uh, one thing I didn't show off was the tutorial, which you can do uh, on the single player menu, which just takes you to a, an extra stage where I hope you like Homer Chow, because he is not going to shut up. Unless you skip past his dialogue, but even then you're still going to be hearing him. Uh, but Team Rose have to go through that level anyway. Uh, it's just if you do it from there, it'll take you to Team Sonic. Team Dark and Chaos Six. Well, unless, probably unless you hack your way in, uh, they can't go through it. Again, I missed it. I say again because it's my second take of this. So Sonic Heroes really does bring back a lot of the. Uh, classic elements in its level design. There's no cities, there's no hub worlds from SA1. There's none of that sort of... well there is a city, I should... <clears throat> but it's, it's a lot more classic Sonic. Yeah, it screams the Mega Drive Genesis days. You know, we got we got checkerboards on the, the, the dirt here. We have whale-shaped islands. We have monitors are now our items again instead of the capsules from the adventure games. The only thing that's not really returning from the classic days are the uh, the badniks. Instead we have these egg pawn things which are shaped a lot like Eggman. I think this is really where it began, where Eggman really started trying to make everything look like himself. Here we have one of the Sonic Heroes' many multiple pathways. One thing that Heroes definitely does right is multiple pathways. But in most levels, there are some levels that are a bit on the linear side, but this is the general way that Sonic Heroes levels are structured. You can access different areas by using different formations. And we have three formations. We have Speed Formation with the blue symbol. We have Flight Formation with the yellow symbol. And Power Formation, which is the red symbol. I don't think I really need to explain what each one of them does, but if you can't work out what you need to use, there will always be those monitors. Even towards the end of the game, where you really shouldn't need them, those monitors will be everywhere. Now Sonic Heroes is quite a long game. As I said, this should probably be a good 65-66 parts. Because a lot of Sonic Heroes levels tend to be really quite long. Especially the extra missions. I'm expecting some of those to take up a good 14 minutes each. Power core. Now at each team you can also level up your characters. They're identified by the little white dots. When they're white that means they're fully leveled up. And it pretty much just makes sure your character's attacks more powerful. There's a massive bird there that really doesn't mean anything. I know I should be explaining the level here, but I keep playing this game so fast to uh, really prevent me from doing so. And speaking of fast, well, in a second. So, uh, yeah, for the speed formation, it's all, well, it's all about speed, really. You have your homing attack. Uh, that's pretty much uh, the only thing returning is everything's pretty different this time around. There's no spin dash. You have this rocket excel thing, which is all around useless. Uh, you, uh, to, in order to use the Rocket Excel, you have to do this roll attack, which is somewhat like the Somersault from the Adventure Games. What was the point of that? Sometimes it sends Sonic a long way, sometimes it barely sends him anywhere. I don't know why. If you release the button too early, then you'll do some sort of weird uh, 
hovering kick thing. That's how it's your solo attack. But that's what Shadow and Sonic will do. Uh, Espio will throw shurikens. And Amy, well, hers is sort of like her spin hammer attack from the Sonic Adventure 1. And just like that, it will stop you in place. And most annoyingly of all, every single time she uses it, she makes this really annoying ha sound effect. And it's so annoying. By the way, this island is shaped like a whale. It even has a blowhole. Whee! It's indeed the system I am playing this on. And that's our first stage. That was Seaside Hill, complete with probably the biggest loop the Sonic series has ever contained. Well, unless you want to count the story for Sonic 06. Oh, I went there. And that's in an easy... A rank right there. Yeah. I, I will be putting all of the A ranks on screen at the beginning of each loading screen for a level. For a Seaside Hill, it's 60,000. I nearly got 70,000 there. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed. I needed six more rings. Because I don't think ring bonus is really a thing in Sonic Heroes. And returning from the adventure games, we have emblems. There's 120 of them. For some reason, emblems, you get one for e for each level with each team, but you only get them once per boss fight. So whatever team faces the boss, none of the other teams get an emblem, but they still get the A rank. But they still get the rank. So that's why there's like 141 A ranks, but only 120 emblems. I don't know what the point of that is. And just like the Dreamcast version of Sonic Adventure 2, you still have to uh, collect the emblems to unlock the multiplayer stuff. It's... Uh, uh, 20 emblems for each uh, game, I guess. And now we are in, also making its 3D debut, special stages. You'll have to go through these tube things, collecting as many spheres as you can to reach the end before the timer runs out. You can extend the timer by collecting the spheres, and they also fill up your boost gauge. This is technically the first game to introduce it, but as you can see from what was going on there, the special stages are absolutely atrocious. The controls are horrendous. The, the characters are either move all over the place or they just don't freaking move at all. And it is really, really annoying. And in, there are two types of there are two types of special stages. In order to get to a special stage, you need to break open a cage that will contain a small key. And you then pretty much have to do a no damage run of the level, which is pretty hard to do in order to gain access to the special stage. In the first act, you'll... See, what was that? The dash pad is supposed to make me go fast. All that did was slow me down. And now because we're going down, the moment I move left to right, look at the speed I'm going. If you ever want to go fast going downwards, just don't move. I'm not boosting because the higher your score, the more, the more lives I get. That's what we're doing here, lives. The at one special stages are the bonus challenges. You, they are simply for lives. The at two special stages are where you're going to be getting the chaos emeralds. You don't collect them through story anymore. You have to collect them through special stages. And you still need them to unlock the final boss. Just like in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Just like in... Uh, I don't think Triple Trouble did it. Sonic Blast did it. Uh, Sonic 3D Blast did it. And... Uh, it's like Pocket Adventure and Advance 1 and 2. They also did. They, they're, they're all the games that did it that predate Heroes. And well, they're, the, they're the important special stages. You get lives in both of them, but these ones serve no purpose for story. It's just for lives. The only problem is special stages are incredibly glitchy. Not only the control slippery, they are glitchy as all hell. I hate these special stages. Still better than Lost World 3DS, but I hate these stages, and that's the max lives you can get. There are special stages where you can get 60,000, but you're still only going to get 5 lives. And we have our Batman style Sonic logo there. If you, if you restart a level, it'll, you'll see the Sonic image go inward, it'll get smaller, and then expand outward again. You just want to add the, uh, the 60s Batman symbol there, like that. And because I'm playing this live, Anytime I die in a level, anytime I fail to get the A rank at the end, because this is an all A rank run, I will be editing in any retries or any restarts. So if at any point the loading screen looks like it's suddenly going into a 
a weird transition where you might very briefly get a glimpse of where I died in the level. Uh, I do apologize for that, but that's just the result of a live Let's Play. And I can't really edit my way around that, because it's not like the screen fades to black or anything like that. The, the Sonic thing will encase most of the screen, but you can still see the level in the middle. So I'll try to uh, not make it sound like I'm continuing on from what I'm saying after playing the level the first time. But if at any point what I say doesn't sound like it entirely makes sense, it's because I'm talking through where the, I've repeated the level and where I've then gone back to uh, the original run through where I went into the second level. Now, Sonic Heroes level's structure is a lot like the classic days. So there are seven zones in the game, each containing two acts and a boss act. So this is this is pretty much the seaside zone which contains Seaside Hill and Ocean Palace when we have the boss fight afterwards. There's a futuristic city zone, a casino zone because, you know, since Sonic 2, we can't have a Sonic, we can't have a Sonic game without a, a casino zone. I was tapping into my inner Jeff Goldblum there. Uh, we have a canyon zone, we have a jungle zone. The slot from Sonic 1 8-bit, although it does look very familiar. We have a spooky castle zone and we have the egg fleet zone. Uh, you know, I like that. It, it really, it sort of gives a, like a sense of progression. I don't know. I mean, at the same time, you question how we get to some of these places. Like, how do we end up from a spooky castle into a, an air fleet that's up in the sky? I, I don't get that. One thing Ocean Palace really likes trying to make you do is the, uh, d the power formation slow descent move. Team Sonic and Team Dark have this triangle dive. I guess it's the closest thing we have to Knuckles' glide, only it's not a glide. It pretty, it's pretty much going to stop you right in place. So it's, I don't know why it allows us to go up fans, but it can. Which I don't get. But I can maybe understand it for like Big, Big and Vector, because Big just uses his umbrella. And Vector blows a bubble of gum. Whoa! Okay, I don't know what happened there, but that's probably going to lead me to the biggest problem that I have with Sonic Heroes, and that is the control. Now, it's, not, it's not special stages control, but the control is pretty bad, and there's really no excuse for it. It's the adventure games, they got it right. Now, they got it pretty much spot on, where it was really... All it was, it was just the, the 2D gameplay... Now with a 3D perspective. And see, I lost my key there, which means I need to try and find another one. Thankfully, there are multiple keys in a level. Because this is how I need to get the Chaos set. Fortunately, the ending to this level is really luck-based around me. I may get hit, I may not. Which is really annoying. Ah! That's just, that happened to me in the first take. This guy has a great predictive shot. Ugh. And like Adventure 2, you can only pick up 20 rings no matter how many you had. Ugh. I forgot what I was saying, yeah? Yeah, yeah, the control. Because the Adventure games, it was pretty much just 2D Sonic in 3D with a homing attack and some power-ups. But there's no power-ups in this game. You get everything is here from the get-go. We have our light dash. That's what it's called here, the light speed dash. Uh, well, really we don't have any of our other power-ups. If we use the Team Blast, which you get when you fill up the gauge, you saw me do it, use it a few times already. Uh, one of the moves that Son Team Sonic can do short for a short while after using Team Blast is the light speed attack. But it's, it's useful because it takes out all the enemies in one go. Because uh, they are now sporting health bars. But uh, you can only use it for that short period of time. Grab another key. And actually, I just want to go back a second. No, I don't. <laughs> I, I, I think it's there for multiple teams, so show it off then. There's a little path you can take on top. You may have noticed that. Uh... All right, just before I get into that, don't go, don't hit the spring and fly formation because this rock will come down. It will go faster than you are falling because you will fall very slowly, and you will get hit. Now, how's this going to play out? going to play out well so far. Sometimes that rock hits me in the loop and I don't know how to stop that from happening. 
It's just like sometimes it moves faster than others because it does have like a rubber band thing. They also clip through each other very clearly. But yeah, I get hit there a lot. And all of a sudden they're not a threat because they're clearly clipping through me right there. So I don't know why they don't hit me there. So I see if you couldn't just put in some sort of animation that shows the rocks going away. You couldn't move them away. You're just going to suddenly make, make them not an obstacle. I wish Crisis City was structured like that. But at the very least it means I can actually try and get the Chaos Emerald. I didn't get that on the first take. Because that rock actually hit me sooner than it normally does. I didn't even go through the loop. I did have one funny thing happen to me one time. I was playing Team Dark. And I went through that loop. I was halfway through it. And then the, the rock hit me. And then it launched me back. To uh, the start of the loop. Because it, it, it launched me back to the pathway on the other side. And then I guess that the rock just kept going. I never saw the rock after that. The other two were still there, but I never saw the first one. I was getting rather paranoid that I might accidentally run into it because it's going slower than normal. You see, it is possible to do that in like a, a Lost World in Sonic Adventure 1 in the boulder section. So uh, I was a bit worried there, but there, that's our Chaos Emerald. So that was easy enough. On the PS2, the control is even worse. The special stages are even glitchier. And I can say that for much of the PS2 version. Basically, PS2 version, it's half the frame rate. Uh, this runs at 60, PS2 is 30, although the uh, the uh, capture device is not actually allowing me to do that, which is why you're going to be seeing this at like 30 frames per second. So sorry if the characters ever look like they're breaking apart. Uh, but it's out of my hand. <laughs> Stop your futile time. You just make fools of yourself. Hmm. I think you got that backwards, Doc. And now we have our first boss fight. It's the Egg Hawk. Yeah, uh, what else does the PS2 version have? A poor collision detection. That's the number one thing. I've clicked through springs plenty of times in that version. Never happens here. Other than that, uh, Xbox version is pretty much the same as this. I don't know about the PC other than the fact that Cream is for some reason missing her A rank quote. And the final boss is super shiny. And that's saying something because in Sonic Heroes, characters are pretty shiny. Ow. Come on. I need to beat this guy in under a minute and I normally beat him in under 40 seconds. Just keep mashing Knuckles with his fire dunk. If he does start to move away, he should come back towards me. This is the longest I have ever taken on the Egg Fleet since the very first time I played this game. And those bullets are hovering in the air. And that's, that's that's the way the game is structured. So that was an abysmal run. But uh, it doesn't matter, just as long as I have the A rank. This is, then it technically counts, but I normally beat that in under 40 seconds. This is what I mean by the emblems. For when I get... I will never get that emblem again for any other team, even though it is structured differently. I don't get it.